Bell is the producer and the writer of what songs? Uh, uh, Dead Man's Curve, The Rain of Park and Other Things, The Pied Piper by The Changing Times, the original. Uh, That's this over here. There's The Pied Piper. Yeah. There's The Rain of the Park, The Cow's Hills. Yeah, this was given to me at NAM uh, this past year. They stopped the proceedings and had me stand up. And it was great because the head of BMI came in and uh, I was sitting with uh, Patty Smith and uh, who else was there? Another, another artist we know. So, uh, no, I remember when you added the Pied Piper because you were the first company, you were the first co company to, to add the Pied Piper yeah. in the country. I think Herb Rosen was promoting you. Yeah, we had Herb Rosen and of course, you know, uh, back in those days we had Jimmy Wisner. Oh, well, these are all, these are all, you know, hey, I'm 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 67, Joey. Come on. Well, Jimmy, I'm, no, I'm 76. God Almighty! Oh, yeah? I get even, oh, you're having. I, I get confused. <laughs> I forgot you were. <laughs> yeah, sit down. Sit down over here. So I'm responsible for the Pied Piper. You were the first station to play it. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, you know. How about the cow sills? Uh The cow sills? Well, they were from New England, and I did such a pre-promotion on them because I was the writer and the producer of every song. So I really, uh, Jimmy was my arranger. Oh yeah, he was great. Oh, he's a great guy. Yeah. And yeah, of course, I was at WDRC Did, with Bertha yeah, Porter. You with Bertha Porter? I, I know that <laughs> because I went to. Uh, well, I I used to go up there once in a while. And remember I remember when radio and records were married. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> what happened is uh, Morris Levy, <laughs> George Goldner, <laughs> Bert Burns. Those are all the great ones. The old gangs, yeah. yeah. I don't put them down. No, not at all. No, no, because, you know, people could put me down too, but whatever. For what? I don't know. No. <laughs> They'll find no, something. Put you down. We're, we're here to celebrate you. For peeing on my pants in the Woodstock movie? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Plumber's Award, you got that from, from uh, Col what is it, Kohler? The yeah, Plumber. Kohler, Kohler. You couldn't, couldn't find a place to go to the bathroom at Woodstock. You know, when I saw you last, last I saw you was at... Uh, at the uh, Colorado thing about four years ago. Yeah. That's the last time I saw you. And uh, I want to, I have greetings from Janet Osteroff. Oh, well, she's, you know, her partner, Steve Duboff, my writing partner, was her, she was married to. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, her mother, her father, her mother uh, who passed away was a friend of mine, and, uh, you know, and Duboff was a good friend of mine. I started writing with Tony Wine. You did? Yeah, we wrote uh, the Shirelles, uh, Tonight You're Gonna Fall In Love With Me, and in fact, I produced the last three Shirelles. And of course, they put Luther Dixon's name on my demo. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, uh, oh God. Well, you've had a great history. Now, what happened with Woodstock? Oh, but oh, let me tell you, Jan from Jan and Dean, Jan was the genius. He's yeah. the one who taught Brian Wilson, because Jan was five years older. Brian would show up at the studio and watch Jan. And this is when Jan was Jan and Arnie. Remember, yeah, no, oh, yeah. Oh, Jenny Lee, ba 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 right? So um, it was really fun for me writing with Brian Wilson and with Jan Berry. He's and on tour, you know. Who, Brian? Yeah. With with the Beach Boys? No, alone. By himself. He's going to be at the Hard Rock Cafe, I think, in January. Well, down here? Yeah. Wow, do you have a connection there? Well, yeah, you want to go? Yeah. You have to leave the house. Yeah, well, you know what? He did a big thing because, it's, because you know, Lou Adler with his games. Yeah. Lou Adler added Donnie Allfelt, a doctor, and he added, um, and he added his name, Donnie Allfelt. Well, Lou, so, Lou Adler had the mamas and papas, yeah, too. Right? Yeah, I know, but what he did was a sneaky thing. He did it so he'd get the play, you know, they they would get their money because they get they get part of the writers. Now I never agreed to that, never. And uh, just uh, so Brian Wilson, for some reason this past year there was so much action on Dead Man's Curve yeah. that uh, Brian Wilson said on uh, in, in Rolling Stone, he said it's all bullshit. Artie Cornfell wrote Dead Man's Curve. The melody and 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 the and the, and the words. I was gonna go looking for the word lyric, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> Lyrica. <laughs> Anything you can get Walgreens, I know the name. Well, Arnie, I have a question. Go ahead, Joe. Why are you living on Classical Drive? 
because I was a classical musician before when I was in high school. I was all state first chair solo in New York. I, I, yeah, I was a I was a great trumpet player. I didn't know that. And then I wanted to write songs, and how you write songs on a trumpet because you got to play the melody. And I I didn't know chords, so I went out. I worked the whole summer because we were. My dad was a copy at three jobs, and I was always working. And I uh, worked the whole summer, and I had enough to buy a web chord tape recorder, and and uh, some kind of I don't even remember the brand of the guitar, and. Uh, the tape recorder also, yeah, the tape recorder was great. So I would put down a basic track and then I could go over it and I could sell sync on top of it. You know, so yeah. and, uh, once I did that, the first the first record I made is when I met Charles Koppelman by mistake. Oh, Charlie yeah. Koppelman and I played softball together on oh. a softball team. Then I met Charlie by mistake. He was just going into screen jams with Nani. It was still Nevin's Kirshner. And um, I had this one $50 demo I saved up the money to make. So I'm sitting in Queens College and I'm just telling people, this is how it happens, gang out there. I'm telling everybody how everything's gonna be okay because I'm gonna take this demo to my good friend, Charles Koppelman. Now those demos, when you got them, it was $50 for three hours, but you could only get one copy. Right. Right, so, <laughs> so I... Uh, I saw him and I took the Long Island Railroad in the next day and I, I didn't have a car and uh, I met Charles and then he brought me into Don, and Don Rubin and then they brought me in to see uh, Donnie. And the next thing I knew, before I left an hour later, I was a Nevins Kirshner, Alden Music, which became Screen Gems, uh, mm -hmm. writer. And then, and then my first, uh, in my first seven months I had Four hits. Wow. And the funny thing with Jan Berry, when Jan came into town, Donnie had a feeling about putting me and Jan together. And our first thing, three songs were Dead Man's Curve, okay, uh, which, which which Brian actually said in Rolling Stone, because, you know, Lou had a little thing about adding names to his songs. And, and I, sorry, Lou. So, <laughs> with your house, you could deal with it. No. So I, uh, I, uh, it wound up his son managed my son in L.A. Oh. And it, it just, uh, you know, it was a, it's a small family. I don't know now, it's such a dispersed family now. I mean, Clay Gish is not, is not even, I don't know if he's still making it because he had that Agent Orange, you know. Yeah. Murray, you know, I wrote Murray's theme. I wrote it, It's What's Happening, Baby, and I produced the record with him. Did you know Frankie C? Yeah. <laughs> Frankie Crocker? No, Frankie oh. C. Who owned Lamella? Oh yeah, who was the music guy? Oh yeah, Frankie C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He passed away a couple of years ago. Oh god, a lot of our friends are gone. You know. Yeah, I know. We're probably the ten percent that are left. We're still here. You look great, Joey. Thank you. <laughs> you really look great, man. You look great. <laughs> you so you know, it. you're getting an award. Uh, yeah. Lifetime but, achievement. Yeah, but I can't get there. Well, you're going to be here on tape. Yeah, we're taping. We're going to do it now. Do you know what it's for? Do you know what the award is? Uh, the award is for uh, contributions to the advancement of, uh, of music and the music industry. And? Basically, and uh, writing and producing. Long Island. And Long Island, because I grew up on Long Island. Yeah. That's true. That's so true. there you are. You're going to have to say a couple of words. Now I'm going to turn this off, and then you've got to say a couple of words of thank you, okay? Uh, thank you, North Balmore, Levittown, and Comac. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs>